I read 269 comments from some very upset homeowners about their most costly mistakes when buying or selling a home. I'm going to share six of those stories here with you today so that you sweet, innocent, first time home buyers and sellers do not find yourself in the same position. Also, I found a few common threads. So if you stick around to the end, I'll share the three most common mistakes that people complained about. And number one, really threw me for a loop. Let's get into it. So I stumbled across a gold mine. Well, it's really more like a mine because there is a bunch of that people are complaining about on Realtor.com's Facebook page. They ask people to share their most costly mistakes when buying or selling a home and the comment section went wild. So I read through all of those and I figured I'd share some of those mistakes here today so that we can learn from their mistakes and save a whole lot of heartache in the future. Mistake number one, not paying attention to the neighbors. Romney Shake mentioned dogs next door still barking. Now this might sound a little mundane, but the underlying lesson here is make sure you spend some time in the neighborhood so you can, you know, catch a vibe. Go during off hours and times when everybody's home. And in Romney's case, maybe bring some dog treats. Mistake number two, skipping the full inspection. Oh man, I hate this. Linda V. Engel mentioned not getting a complete inspection. Total rookie move. She didn't expound on what happened in her home, but I can only imagine the type of craziness she ran into when she moved into that place. Always get a home inspection, a complete home inspection. I didn't even know that they offered like partial home inspections, but please, buying a home is kind of like dating. You want to get all of the quirks and flaws out up front so that you know what kind of crazy you're committing to. Mistake number three, ignoring tenant histories. So this is for my people that are buying those investment properties. Sergio found himself in a really, really bad predicament because he bought a place where the tenants had a poor payment history when it came to their rent, meaning they either weren't paying on time or they weren't paying at all. Always do your due diligence when buying an investment property because there's serious money on the line. Look at those rental histories, go and ask the neighbors, talk to the tenants, like really, really get as much information as you can up front. That way you don't get caught off guard by tenants who don't pay the rent. Prayers up for you getting your back rent. Mistake number four, being too hasty. Melody regretted not holding on to her home and she's a real estate agent. Even us genius real estate agents can't time the market though. So you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. But I can only imagine how much money she left on the table by not holding on to that property just a little bit longer. Real estate is a really, really simple formula if you want to win. Got to build up that equity. Melody, sorry you didn't get as much money as you could have, but hey, something is better than nothing. Mistake number five, not having a buyer's agent. Matt got rotten floors in the house that he purchased after he used the home inspector and the real estate agent that were both hired by the seller. Look, the seller's agent is always looking out for the seller's best interest. And that's why it's so important for a buyer to have a buyer's agent. You want somebody who has experience in these situations so that someone else has your back and you don't get caught with these rotten floors. Super sorry that this happened to you. Next time, make sure you have your own agent and don't trust the sellers, man. Mistake number six, new construction does not equal perfect. Annette ended up buying a money pit after she got a new construction home that ended up needing new roof, new AC, new plumbing, new windows. And I mean, really, it sounds like she ended up needing a whole new house. Make sure that you get your new construction home inspected and make sure that you vet that home inspector, right? So you don't end up like the other people. But I really think the red flag here was the name of the builder. Me personally, I'm not buying a home built by a builder named Willie and Willie. Just doesn't give me the most confidence in the situation, you know? So after reading through all of those comments, I was able to pull out some common threads. And there's three things that I saw people mention the most. Number one is 
timing the market. People are either mad that they sold too early or sold too late and weren't able to get the maximum amount they could. My thought here is we can't time the market. Usually with real estate, the longer you hold something, the better, but like that's not always gonna be true. And you gotta sell it when the time is right for you. Number two is trusting the wrong home inspector. All right, like home inspectors have a huge job. They have to go in and mark every single flaw in the house and someone's always gonna miss something. I mean, they're only human. But you wanna make sure that you hire a home inspector that has great reviews and not just somebody who is referred to you by a friend or just the very first person that you find off Google. Like do a deep dive, look at all of their pages and really get a feel for the type of work they're doing. And the number three most common mistake, the one that cut me the deepest was trusting the wrong realtor. Now, realtors have a hard job too. and We don't know everything, but it is our job to be as honest and upfront with the people that we're working with as possible and to be on their side and help guide them through this very, very crazy and hectic process. If you don't have the right realtor on your side, then typically you're going to end up with some regret at the end of the transaction. So my advice here is interview more than one realtor before you commit. Maybe don't have them show you homes, but just talk to them, get a really good feel, read those reviews, and really, really get a vibe for how much knowledge that realtor actually has. Because most of the times, they're gonna be the ones that make or break a deal. If you need a good realtor that you know you can trust, me and my team are more than happy to help. Go check out our reviews on Google, reach out. We would love to hear your story and see how we can assist with your transition. I hope you guys learned something here today. I definitely did. Look, buying a house, stressful situation. Just be careful, do your due diligence, and having the right agent on your side, it really makes all the difference. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.